Southpaw fighters are a crazy bunch. Would you go into a medieval battle with no shield if it meant your opponent didn't get a shield as well? By choosing to stand with their opposite forward from their opponents, this is the choice Southpaws are making, giving up the protection of their lead hand shield to clear a path for their rear hand mace. These sinister tactics are used by the like of Crawford, Pacquiao, Lomachenko, Whitaker, Hagler, Usyk, and many others. In doing so, they can crush their enemies, see them driven before them, and hear the lamentation of their women. If you're at all into boxing, you've probably heard that the key to fighting in Southpaw, or to fighting a Southpaw, is to keep your lead foot on the outside of your opponents. This is generally a good rule, but also a massive oversimplification. While some will always insist that their one way is the only correct way. And Bojitsu, the ultimate evolution in the martial arts. True masters can bend convention because they know the reason behind the rules. So let's look at the classics, as well as the stuff your coach insists not to do, but that the great pros do all the time anyways. When thinking about footwork, you should be looking to maximize your advantage and put your opponent into an awkward position. Southpaws have unique ways of doing this, and orthodox fighters fighting Southpaws can use these same tricks. As I mentioned before, a lot of your tactics depend on where you keep your foot, on the outside or the inside. But there's another equally important element, and that's the angle you're at relative to your opponent. And if that seems confusing, stay with me, because we're going to cover it step by step. For now, just understand that neither option, foot inside or outside, is inherently better or worse. It ultimately depends on what your objective is and if you have the correct alignment to pull it off. And since most viewers will be familiar with attacks from the outside angle, we'll start there. Keeping the lead foot on the outside is excellent for lining up the rear hand while keeping the attacker offline. Manny Pacquiao was an expert at this tactic, using it for his nearly patented split entry counter. The foot angle let him counter his opponent's jab, cutting through with his head safely offline and generating potent power. Since high level fighters know how important this outside angle can be, it often leads to foot battles, where opponents try to muscle into position and tend to stomp on each other's feet while doing so all in an effort to achieve positional dominance. In fact, this is how Marquez KO'd Pacquiao. He refused to let Pacquiao take the ideal position, and he stepped in with him, leading to a spectacular knockout. The same outside angle offers space to carve a lead hook around the shoulder. Ceremonies a couple of weeks ago, and he just enjoys himself. And it lines up the rear uppercut between the guard at mid to close range. And though it isn't regularly mentioned, you can also leverage this angle while circling backwards. Not only does it keep you from getting trapped against the ropes but it presents the same targets as if you were advancing, all while your opponent steps into your punch. Lay on this, see him lay on that left side. Punching between punches and a... What was to come? Terrence Crawford is the best finisher in the game, and he knew... From this outside angle, pivoting counterclockwise is the most common tactic. And you could do a lot from there offensively and defensively. You could exit with a jab or a hook, you could control their guard or head as you move off angle, or you could weave or duck away. Since your lead foot is on the outside, there's nothing getting in your way from taking this position. It's go beautiful right here. And the chance gets to him. Oh. 
Truly skilled fighters can line up their jab by getting their shoulder inside of their opponents while keeping their lead foot on the outside. The reason I bring it up is because it makes pivoting out easier while your jab is still staring down the center line. But we should count this as an advanced tactic. If you can pull it off, having your lead shoulder lined up while your lead foot is outside lets you follow up with a cross. or provides an easy escape. Keep in mind, you can pivot out with your foot on the inside too, but you'll need to shuffle or pendulum step back and then find a clear path to exit. Purnell Sweet Pea Whitaker was extremely adept at this tactic, but it takes a lot of hard work and otherworldly skills to make it look as effortless as he did. Even if you don't want to do this on purpose, it's a good idea to practice it in case you ever get caught in this position. Now on to the third outside position. From the first position, you can shuffle even further inside. And if you can do this, your competitor will be entirely at your mercy. This position is usually achieved with something you can consider like a shuffle pivot, because you'll be turning on the lead foot to stay with your opponent. I like to call it the matrix shuffle after Lomachenko. And then Dominic Cruz linked my video to his footwork course students and called it that too. And he's a footwork master, so who am I to argue is just called that now. Regardless, the matrix shuffle is incredibly effective because your opponent needs to turn to face you to have any chance of returning fire. So it places you one step ahead the entire way. So while they're trying to catch up, you're already throwing your next move. A great irony about the Mayweather-McGregor fight is that McGregor consistently was able to get this angle, but had no idea what to do with it when limited to only punches. Now Lomachenko added on another trick to this, leaving his hand in front of the opponent's gloves as he moved his body out of the way, like a matador leaving the cape in front of the bull. Pointing out how he did this was one of the videos that propelled this channel to become one of the top martial arts channels on YouTube. And all the credit for that goes to Lomachenko for doing something so batshit insane. Let's look at an advanced trick from Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Now Marvelous was his legal first name. And looking at these knockouts, I think you can agree he deserved it. After taking an outside angle, his opponent would rush to escape the ropes by circling inside, away from his right hand. Instead of trying to keep his southpaw stance as he followed, Hagler would simply turn and shift into an orthodox stance, creating a shortcut to a ready position. Once there, he could cut off the unsuspecting opponents, and this didn't go well for them. Stay tuned for our follow-up video on switch hitters, and I'll go more in depth on this tactic along with a few others. Now, let's look at the dark art positions. The ones everyone tells you to avoid, but that some of the best fighters in the entire world use regularly. Fighters like Pacquiao and Whitaker like to use the inside foot position a lot because it lines up their jab. This works the same as how the outside position lines up the cross. Keen observers will notice that the inside position has the downside of lining up the opponent's rear hand for them. But there are answers to that and ways to use it against them. Whitaker preferred to use Philly shell tactics to avoid rear hand collisions. while Pacquiao used his athleticism to evade and press further inside. Which, conveniently, takes us to the next, even more dangerous inside angle position. After Pacquiao bounded inside, he would throw the cross while pivoting to follow his opponent as they tried to circle out. This is kind of the same idea as Hagler's turn shift, because the opponent is expecting they're in a safe position Pacquiao's method requires an unbelievable amount of athleticism because he's turning on a dime while measuring his target. 
It's no wonder his left hand caught so many competitors by surprise. But more than that, there was massive power behind it. And we thought Morales was going down. Oh, and he does go down. For a half minute to go. Plenty of time for Pacquiao if he can find the right time. Oh, and a beautiful combination. Now goes the right down. Darryl picking a good German fighter, knocking down. But he appears to be all right right here. You can actually take the same idea of moving deeper inside to the extreme, completely squaring up with your opponent, and forcing them to exchange wide open with you face to face. But the true power of southpaw footwork is only fully unleashed when you could use the inside and outside angles together, switching effortlessly between them. Check out this brilliant display from Manny Pacquiao versus Morales, where Pacquiao is able to avoid all these punches by leveraging the best of both options weaving through as he steps to the left and right. And this can be done offensively as well. I could go on all day about footwork, but I think this video is getting long enough. If you want to check out a few more positions and how to get to them, you can check out my book, Footwork Wins Fights. So what Southpaw tactics do you like? What's your go-to? Where do you find yourself getting caught? What would you like to get better at? Were there any questions you have that I didn't cover? Let me know below and I'll do my best to answer them. From the Modern Martial Artist, this has been David Krishna, wishing you happy training.